Good morning guys, welcome to Vietnam. We're really, really excited to be here. We have a full itinerary planned for this new travel series. We've got a lot of fun and exciting videos for you. We took a long travel day yesterday from the Philippines to Vietnam and we are currently in Saigon or Ho Chi Minh and we are going to be spending the day exploring. But before we get into it, we want to say a big thank you to Surfshark for sponsoring today's video. So we've been using Surfshark VPN since we started travelling. And if you're wondering what a VPN is, it stands for Virtual Private Network. And it encrypts all data exchanged between your device and the internet, making sure no one can steal your personal information. With all the travelling we do, we're constantly connected to public Wi-Fi's in cafes, hotels and airports. And Surfshark helps us stay safe while browsing the internet anywhere in the world. Another reason we use Surfshark is to access more movies and TV shows on Netflix. As we currently travel in Southeast Asia, we have access to a limited amount of English movies, but Surfshark allows us to connect to the British Netflix to continue watching our favourite programmes. We also like to connect to the US Netflix, as it does have a bigger choice of things to watch. But our favourite use to Surfshark is to save money while booking hotels and flights. As prices can vary based on the country you're in, Surfshark allows us to change our IP location, helping us save money, keeping us on the road for longer. Surfshark is currently the only VPN that gives you full protection on all your devices with just one account. So if you want both protection and freedom online, click the link in the description and use the promo code Ash and Kels for a massive 83% off and three months of service totally for free. Surfshark also offers a 30 day money back guarantee so there's no risk in trying it out for yourself. Right, so you may notice us referred to the city as Saigon and Ho Chi Minh. And that's because people use both names. In the war, the American used this place as headquarters and it was referred to as Saigon. And once it was taken back over by the North Vietnamese troops, they then named it Ho Chi Minh. And that was in 1975. So people seem to use it both interchangeably in conversation. So we probably call it Saigon and Ho Chi Minh. This place really is as crazy as people say it is. The first thing we've noticed is how many mopeds and bikes there are just going through the streets. We've actually looked up as well, there are nine million people living here in Ho Chi Minh and there are seven million bikes, which is absolutely crazy. We also picked up some pineapple. We really miss picking up just some fruit on the street. So we picked up some pineapple for breakfast and this is only 20,000 dong, which is around 70 pence. Yes, yeah, so the currency exchange rate is something like 22,000 to one. So it's definitely gonna take us some time to get used to. The money as well just looks absolutely crazy to us. A note of 10,000 dong, a note of 50,000 dong. <laughs> we took out money from the ATM yesterday and we instantly became millionaires because we took out about 35 pound each uh, and that, that's equivalent to about a million each. Which is crazy to actually technically have a million in my hand, but of course it wasn't a million pounds. Right, so let's head to the first stop of the day. I'm really excited for it. Me too. Okay, so a massive part of the history in Vietnam is obviously the war with America. Obviously the Americans call it the Vietnam War, but here they would call it the America War. Obviously we already know a little bit about the war, but we've come to the War Remnant Museum today as the first stop, just to learn a little bit more about the history and the war. So I've just read that the US actually left over $5 billion worth of military equipment in Vietnam when they left. set up all across the country and I went into detail about the torture techniques. It's definitely something that we didn't learn about sort of in school and things and it's not understandable why because some of the torture methods were 
just horrific. Yeah, I don't know if that's because we're in school, so they don't want to go into too much detail, or if they've just played it down in Western society to not be as bad as it was. Yeah, which is bad because people should really know about it. Yeah. But definitely 100% recommend coming here if you're in Ho Chi Minh. I learned so much. It is really interesting. I think we spent about two hours in there just walking and reading every single thing. We're going to carry on exploring Saigon, but first we're going to head for a stop and lunch. One of the biggest challenges here is crossing the road in this chaos. This is a zebra crossing, but they do not stop. Um, you kind of just have to walk and hope for the best. Yeah, you just gotta go for it. Are we gonna go? We made it! They, ah! they kind of just move around you. It might look like chaos, but it's organized chaos. Yeah, they know what they're doing. We have made it to the Notre Dame Cathedral, not to be confused with the one in Paris. And unfortunately, it is under construction. We've had a bit of bad luck when it comes to things being under construction when we got to see them. And I think our bad luck with Notre Dame's continues too, because when we did go to Paris, the Notre Dame had just been burnt down and nobody was allowed to access it. But you can sort of see a little bit around the sides of the building, and it's actually a really, really pretty building. And the gardens in front of it are beautiful. But obviously we can't go in because it is totally under construction and the front of the building is just covered in scaffolding. Yeah, and there's like a big wall around it as well, so like you can't even go close. However, it is right next to our next stop. Which is right here. Which is the post office building. Now the post office was built back in the 1800s and it's got a mix of Gothic, Renaissance and French colonial uh, design to it. It's supposed to be really nice inside. From the outside, it does look really beautiful. It does. It looks like it belongs in, in Lisbon or something. Definitely not somewhere you can spend a lot of time, but it's cool to come and check out. And there's loads of souvenirs and postcards. So I think we're going to grab a postcard. Yeah, and I didn't think the sentence would ever come out of my mouth, but I think this is the prettiest post office I've ever been to. I think it's should one of these. So we have picked up a postcard and it's actually got every single place that we are going to be going in the next couple of weeks. Yeah. So I'm going to write it now and I'm going to send it over to my nan. They've also got the hop on hop off buses here. So if you struggle walking in the heat or you just struggle walking in general, you can easily jump on and see the main sights. that we're on the Goyen Hui walking street. I'll leave that here because that's probably not how you pronounce it. And there's a notable walking street here in Ho Chi Minh. I don't really know what's going on here at the moment. There's loads of big screens up, but on Google Maps it says it's a walking street. And we found that walking streets in Southeast Asia are usually pretty cool. Okay, so it turns out that the big screens are for the Southeast Asian games, the 2021 ones, but it was obviously postponed because of COVID. So it's actually every four years and it's been held in Hanoi this year. So hopefully we'll be able to catch some of the celebrations or some of the games as we go along. And we will be in Hanoi by the end of the month. So we might be able to see some events, which would be really cool. But for now, we're gonna walk down to the bottom of the street because it takes us to the Song Saigon River. Uh. <laughs> oh, we're gonna have to get used to that again. This area feels like a completely different city. There's so many different neighborhoods throughout Ho Chi Minh. And as you walk through, there's just something so different about each one. We've got the high rise buildings with all the designer shops. You've got the area that we're staying in, which is definitely a more local area. And then you've got this area here, just with the view with the high rise buildings behind you. It's also really nice down this area because we're by the water, there's a bit of a breeze, so it doesn't feel warm at all. Right, so we visited the top things to do in the city. And I think we've had a fun day exploring our first impressions. Yeah, I think the good thing we did was not do sort of too much research into the city itself. Of course, we researched the top sites to know what to do and what to see. But we didn't, apart from that, have a 
that's all we sort of knew. Yeah, I didn't even know there was a river in this city to be honest. So <laughs> that goes to show how little we actually knew before coming. We have got a full packed itinerary for the next few weeks and it's going to be really exciting. We have got a couple of days that we haven't quite planned. So if you have got any recommendations for Vietnam as a whole, not just in Ho Chi Minh City, leave them in the comments down below and we'll try and get to all your recommendations. If you are new around here, make sure you hit subscribe. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And we will see you again in the next one.